In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondocast. Welcome to the Voondacast, the official podcast of Voondablog.com, the home of whatever, the podcast that Ultron listened to right as he decided that he would wipe out all of humanity. Ugh, that's not a good... Ugh. That's not a good thing? That he just wanted to take us out? He wanted to kill us, that means... <laughs> Ultron hated us. He's the bad guy, he's supposed to hate us, we're heroes, we're oh, super cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Should I should I try it again? This time saying the podcast that the Avengers play to get hyped up before battle. Mm, you could, yeah. I could. I am your host, the man with the plan, the man who's been too busy to produce a podcast, Steven. And with me today is the charming, thoughtful, pretty darn wonderful co-hostess with the mostest people love it when you gush when i gush me, like yes it. they love it it's a beautiful thing they love it it's a beautiful thing it's the wonderful danielle say hi danielle hi very cute voice okay so got some clips to play for you guys and then hopefully we'll have a discussion about uh, the Avengers and summer movies, probably in we general. Do a summer movie roundup because it's been way too much. Yeah, I've been time. We can't do no individual reviews. We got summer movie roundup. So all the movies we've seen so far. Wait, wait, wait. First, boom. Take care of the future. Cause I said boom. Boom's good. Save that boom. Put it on hold. So first, we have a little tidbit of us waiting in line to see Avengers which was the first movie of the summer, our anticipation. So now it'll cut to past Steven and Danielle when Danny says boom. Boom. Uh, very excited about this movie, high expectations. Joss Whedon's final Marvel film, hypothetically. We were tr- No, not hypothetically, final Marvel film. We well, were you don't tr- know, he might come back one day, never say never. We were trying to catch up on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to see how it linked into the movie, but we're only one episode behind. One episode short. Maybe tomorrow, maybe tonight, right after this, we'll just binge watch it real quick and then go to bed. Woo! Next up on this clip roundup is us. After watching Avengers for the first time, bewildered, confused, awestruck by the awesomeness that was Avengers Age of Ultron, trying to wrap our heads around what we've just witnessed. And when Danny says boom, we'll roll clip. Boom! So we just finished watching Avengers Age of Ultron for the first time. Uh, it was a lot to take in. Um, there was a lot of story going on. Pretty colors. We got to soak in all, like, the big crazy moments and epic action. Pretty colors. (laughs) Um, there was no Ant-Man trailer before the movie. There was, like, every other superhero movie except for Ant-Man. Including Batman vs. Superman got a huge pop in the theater. Um, it was awesome. Super good movie. Enjoyed it a lot. Danny, initial thoughts? My initial thoughts are there was a lot of stuff and it was good stuff and I laughed a lot, but I'm definitely going to have to see it a second time to kind of 
soak up some of the stuff. It's not that I was, wasn't able to follow the plot, I was, absolutely, it's not that complicated, it's more that there's stuff that you know you've missed because in any given scene there's like 60 things going on and you want to see it all. There was a lot of like really epic shots where you get to see all the Avengers in the same frame kicking ass, which were eye candy, delightful, amazing. I'm Some events of the film are not permanent, that's all I have to say. Ultron was hilarious. Very funny. Um, good movie. <laughs> Strong follow-up. Uh, Vision looked super cool. All the designs looked amazing. Uh, Thor. Thor jumped around a little bit. Thor jumped around, but I kind of think it's cool that they utilized his alienness to sort of help create vision. Good job, Joss Whedon. High five. <laughs> Good job, Joss Whedon. Then... Boom. And we're back. That was super exciting. Uh, us waiting in line at the movie theater. Next clip that we have up to whet your appetite is a discussion between myself and uh, pop culture flowchart host, Mr. J, the master of a thousand podcasts, the podcaster with no name. So when Danny says boom, it'll cut to that lengthy conversation. Boom! Why, because you're just going to do an intro later? Yeah, I'm going to do an intro later. And then I'm going to, because I recorded myself before I saw the movie in line waiting for the movie. And then I recorded myself for like a minute as we were walking out of the theater. And I saw the did instant commentary? Yeah, but it was the worst commentary ever. It was just us like, wow, that was crazy. Uh, a lot of stuff happened. Like that's all, <laughs> that's all I said. That's terrible. It was too much to process at the time. Um, so then I'll just like do little transitions and I'll put all the footage together. Okay. It'll be a spectacular. Okay. So I'm sitting down here with Mr. J of pop culture flowchart fame. Say, hey, whoa. Mr. J. Hey. Or whoa. Say whatever you want to say. But if you say whoa too much, people are going to start thinking that you're Joey Lawrence. Whoa. And we don't want that. We don't want to get sued by the brotherly love estate. Okay. That we're not allowed. Did you figure out the name of the third... Brother, <clears throat> we did that day because we were, I can't remember anymore. We were trying to figure out the name of the third Lawrence brother because there's obviously Joey, Joey and Matthew. Matthew, but then that third one is very elusive. I think that I remember. I think that it was David. I, I was it. David? I don't know. We still don't know. We figured it out when we went on Wikipedia's, but we forgot again. Yeah, it didn't stay in the permanent memory. Is that I only so. think he did one thing with them. So if you care about the third Lawrence brother, please tweet us at Vundablog or at Vundacast and tweet us his name to know that you support the Lawrence brothers and this podcast. Okay. Back to Ultron. So this is not the age of the third Joy Lawrence brother. It is the age of Ultron. Whoa. The movie has come out this weekend. Right now we're recording this on May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. Whoa. Uh, a geniusly uh, fake holiday that everyone loves celebrating. Yes. Um, but no one will really celebrate. Like, no one's going to watch Star Wars today for real. Like, maybe someone will. But okay. But not me. Back to Ultron. Back to Ultron. Side Sidetracked by myself. Sidetracked. Uh, so, Age of Ultron, would you recommend it? Or would you not recommend it? <clears throat> I would say uh, you sh everybody should, like, give it a watch. I'm not gonna say. Well, I'm not gonna say don't watch it. I'll say go watch it in the theater. But I'm not gonna say. So spend money to see it in the theater. Yeah. Buy it on DVD and Blu-ray. Yeah, probably. So it's a success. Well, it's not. It's not like Guardians or like the first Avengers that like you have to go right away and buy it as soon as it comes out. So it's not an instant classic. It's a. I'll get it down the line. Maybe towards Christmas or something. No. This is Avengers. This is big action. This is the only chance to see 
all of the greatest heroes in one frame together. You have to see this in theaters. You have to pre-order this right now on Amazon or wherever you pre-order things from. And you have to ask for it right away. I'm not as... Like, I want to look... I want to see it again, but I'm not like... I gotta see it right now. Gotta see it right now. Gotta see it on the big screen again. I've seen it twice now. Saw it once. Mr. J seen it once. Yeah. And... It's it's a little long. I kind of was like, oh my god, when are we going to get out of here? A little bit. It's a little long. It's a little long. But and there's a lot of stuff that I felt like we could cut down on. But it's all good stuff. Better. No, it's all no, good stuff. No, it's, cut not. Nothing. no, it's not. Cut nothing. These are the spoilers. These are the spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers. These are the spoilers. It's going to be filled spoilers. with spoilers. So if you haven't seen it, turn it off, walk away. So I'll put this at the end of the podcast. What part? So that it's the deep Ultron, in the spoilers. Okay, so we're going to get some deep spoiler territory right now. We're going to jump that fence into the territory. Spoiler zone. Spoiler zone. Highway to the spoiler zone. <laughs> do, do, do. Yeah. Um, okay, so the first part that we were talking about a little bit earlier was like, I'm going to go chronological a little bit. Well, breaking so it I'm down. I'm going to start off with the beginning. In time. I'm going to start beginning. off with the beginning. So instantly, you're lost. Because unless you follow S.H.I.E.L.D., you have no idea what's going on. You have no idea who Baron Von Strucker is and how the heck did he get his hands on the scepter. Well, if you watch Captain America the Winter Soldier... I did. The end credit scene introduces Baron Von Strucker and it introduces and Scarlet twins. Witch and it establishes that Von Strucker exists in the universe. Yes. That he has the twins in this secret I remember base. the twins, but for some reason I don't remember Von Strucker. He was, he didn't Von Strike me. That's <laughs> someone that I should pay attention to. He's not that Von Striking. No, he's with not. With his little monocle, his little fake CGI. He's not even that important to be in all of Ultron. Spoiler. Von Strucker gets Von Struck. Yeah. Von Stricken down. Uh... And he does it, they do it like off screen too. Like it just like, they just show it's like. It's not even that important to kill him on screen. Yeah, they just show like, oh look, his dead body. And then back to the situation at hand. Back to the situation. Uh, and not the one in New Jersey. No, no, no abs here. <laughs> uh, so the beginning. Yeah, so I was saying like, I'm completely so you, lost. So, so you're completely lost. It. But you don't have to, the whole point is like, were you, were, were you completely lost at the beginning of Indiana Jones? <laughs> with the boulders coming down and Indy's looking for this talisman thing and he's trying to switch things. But I'm just like, them. how the hell did he get his hands on the scepter? And you're saying that they explained that in like the shield. Well, at the end of Winter Soldier, they explain on the shield TV show that everything that shield has impounded, all the weapons and stuff that, that Hydra has gotten it. their hands on them and has been like spreading them all over the world, like secretly to keep them secret. Lots of secrets. And, uh... But when I'm watching... When I go home, and I watch the Avengers, and I'm watching Avengers 1... I want to watch Avengers 1 and Avengers 2. But wait, I can't do that, because I gotta watch Civil... I mean, uh... The Winter Soldier. I gotta watch the Winter Soldier first. And you gotta watch Iron Man 3. Because Iron Man 3 sets up how he can remotely control robots. So you gotta watch that, too. Uh, You gotta watch a lot of stuff. See, this is why I don't like this. This is like a... 11th, this is the 11th movie in that's its history. My, that's my same gripe with Flash and Arrow. Is that, like, toward, like, after, like, halfway towards the season, you kind of have to, like, watch. And you kind of don't know. Like, sometimes you don't have to watch it, one without the other, but sometimes you do have to watch it, and you kind of, like, you don't know. Yeah, the crossover episode. Like, there was one, like, I watched one Arrow where uh, Black Canary had the Canary cry. Without watching the, the Flash, Flash one before, first, oh, where where like, but it wasn't Cisco like a, her, yeah. it wasn't a crossover. It was just like it just happened, you know. So now it's like you have to watch the two that are from that week at the same time, and then it's gonna be just as complicated when you're trying to watch your DVDs. You got to pop in disc whatever. Disc maybe it'll be on disc three. Let's suppose disc three episode whatever, episode twenty, yeah, whatever it is. And then, wait, I can't watch number 21. I got to pop in my arrow disc next. And then now with this third show, I, you know, like, it's just a mess. You can't, like, sit down and just watch one show. But that's DC's problem. Be, 
That's DC's problem. But that's the same problem with the Marvel Universe. I have to watch Shield. But it's looser. No, it's not. I have to, I, it's even more dense. Because I have to watch Iron Man, uh, Captain America, what is it called? The Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Gotta watch. What's the other one? Uh, the Shield. The whole entire season of Shield. Two seasons of Shield. And then watch. I'm, I'm just going to be like done with it. But. When I get to that point. You're you're not looking at the, the the positive to this. If you watch all of these things, you will be extremely happy. And the things will pay off better because you have invested more time in them. And it will make more sense. I just want to watch three movies and that's it. Just keep it to a trilogy. Back to the old Star Wars. Yeah. And I'm even more upset that Infinity War is going to be like... Two movies, because I feel like they won't have a beginning, middle, and end. I feel like they'll be Hobbited, and Hunger Games, and Twilighted. Yeah, and if and this movie Harry felt Potter. long, if this movie felt long, yeah, the next imagine one, a whole setup movie and uh, just then a, a whole payoff movie. I know, like it's gonna be two and a half hours of just setup. I'm gonna blow my brains out but, if that's the way they're going. But Kill Bill did it and did it well. My other gripe. Other gripe is, um, you know what? Black Widow. <laughs> totally disappointed by Black Widow. She was supposed to be the badass. Totally ass. disappointed. She's supposed to be the badass. Totally ass. disappointed. She's supposed sure to be the that? badass chick on this team. She has one cool scene in the beginning where she's like fighting and stuff. The rest of the movie, she spends it like trying to like get into Bruce Banner's pants. And also, um, which goes nowhere, which goes nowhere and takes up way too much of the film and also spends it locked up. She's the only one that gets captured by Ultron and spends half the movie locked up. Now, I'll say this. Okay, no, wait. I'll say this. Wait. If it was done because she's pregnant and she couldn't take part in a bigger part of the movie, then I'll say, okay, I'm so, my bad, Joss Whedon. You know, but if it was done beca- because that's the way it was always planned to be done, then that sucks. First thing, her and Hulk did have a payoff because at the end of the movie, he leaves. He leaves. What, why How's do you think that a he payoff? Leaves? Why do you think he leaves? Because the Hulk cannot handle that type of emotion. The Hulk, because she was trying to like, it wasn't a one way street where she's coming on to him. It was equal, but. Because the Hulk felt like he was going to be emotionally compromised by her. He felt he had to take himself out of the situation as soon as they didn't need him anymore. How does he know that? Instead of... So he's not going to be back for Infinity War? He will be in back for Infinity War. So then what's the point? There's no payoff. Yeah, it's just to get rid of him for Civil War. So he's not going to be in Civil War? He'd be too powerful. No one can take the Hulk. The Hulk wasn't in Civil War. Didn't Iron Man take on the Hulk or was I falling asleep? Yeah, that <laughs> happened. Falling asleep. That happened. Iron Man fought the Hulk. The Hulk was temporarily under, I believe, uh, Scarlet Witch's control. Scarlet Witch control. Yeah. Um, it, but no, I didn't feel like, like it was paid off. But it was just it wasn't paid off how you expect it to be paid off. I feel with like, like it, a romantic. I feel kiss like it went a, nowhere. The same way that like Hawkeye and Black Widow, they seem to have a relationship. And don't give me that. They were just good friend stuff. Because she did not cry over Coulson. She cried over Hawkeye. But that's because that's her best friend. And she knows that he has a whole family. She knew that he had a whole family. She didn't cry about Nick Fury either. Yes, she did. She was weepy. She didn't didn't get to see her cry. But she was, you know, she was emotionally compromised a little bit. And that makes me even more angry. So she was crying about Hawkeye. And nobody else was crying about Hawkeye. None of the men were crying. So they're just making her look like a weak female? What are you saying? In in Avengers, she cried? Yeah, she was crying over Hawkeye. Nobody else was crying. In Avengers 1. Right? Wasn't she crying over Hawkeye? No. Yes. She never cried. I don't remember her... I don't remember tears in that movie. Yeah, she was crying. We have to watch that movie again. Okay. We'll do the follow-up. Was Black Widow crying in Avengers 1? And is that sexist? Because none of the male characters were crying in that movie. No, you. I there were some teary eyes going on when Coulson's dead. There's some emotional searching by Tony Stark and Captain America. That's not my question. My question were was, and then maybe it doesn't have. Maybe it wasn't about Hawkeye. Maybe it was about Coulson. I don't know. But was 
Black Widow crying in that movie, were any of the male characters not searching their feelings? Were they crying? Because that's sexist, right? If, if the only female member on the team is the only one crying, well, and none of the male characters are crying, isn't that bullshit? Well, Thor, this might count as crying. Thor got emotional <laughs> that Coulson died and went to go pick up his hammer in a field. He couldn't pick it up? No. But he made thunder strike, and he made it like rain a little bit. So that's like crying, right? That happened when you're a god. It's like crying. That I happened because he had gotten flown, tossed out of the helicopter, derailed by Avengers One. Okay, so Steven says for sure there was nothing between Hawkeye and Black Widow. I swear there was a relationship. I swear it was. was a- it's what we imagined to be romantic at the time because a guy and a girl. It's always romantic. And because you think of the it comics, was strictly platonic. it's sort of romantic in the comics too. But in the movies, they're trying to establish her as her own character with her own motivations, and that she doesn't need to be everyone's love interest. But that's just what's going on in the movies. I felt like she Hulk. was the love interest in Avengers. I'll, I'll watch it again. Maybe I'm wrong, but I felt like she was Hawkeye's love interest in that movie. I. I know she wasn't really technically like a love interest in, in Captain Winter, Winter Soldier, Soldier, but she was. But she kind of was. She flirted. She flirted and was making out with Captain America the whole time. She, she made out him once. It kind of felt like she wanted to bang him. She kissed him once. But maybe she's the type of person that could just be like friends with benefits and stuff. Maybe she's just friends with Beneficios. But why does she always have to be the one? Why can't the Hulk and Iron Man make out or something? <laughs> Why is it okay that part of her power is her sexuality and her her power to manipulate Why men? Why can't Iron Man's power be that he's sexual? I don't know. Because then he wouldn't be Iron Man. He'd be Sex Machine. But he is. Oh, you gotta love that thing. I need to laugh at that yeah. thing. Sex Machine. Sex Machine. Come on. It feels like she spends too much time in all these movies flirting with people. And not just being a badass character. That's what I'm afraid with too with like Wonder Woman. Please, God, don't do that. To the only female character in the movie. Did you see what also dropped this weekend? The the wait, SNL wait, wait. with Scarlett Johansson? No, I haven't, I haven't. You didn't see the SNL with Scarlett Johansson? No, I heard about it. It was like Black Widow, Age of Me, and it was like all like lovey dubby. Yeah, it was like basically like a chick movie, like a Which date is basically movie. what they have her doing in the last three movies. No. She shoots people and stuff. And she just flips. She had like one cool scene in this movie in the beginning when she was fighting those guys in the snow. But the rest of the movie, like I said, she spends it flirting with the Hulk and getting captured she by Ultron. She has the best line. Why is she the only one she that has, gets captured by Ultron? She has one of the best lines in the whole movie. When when everyone's waiting for her to show up and she's driving a giant truck and she's like, relax, shellhead. Not all of us can fly. That was awesome. That made my freaking... My my pores in my arm, my goosebumps come alive. She called mm-hmm. Iron Man Shellhead. That's so cool. Uh, I also didn't think. I thought Scarlet Witch was a little weak sauce. Scarlet Witch was not weak sauce. She was strong sauce. Eh, she could have. They could have given her a headband or something. That's my only complaint about the <laughs> Give her a headband. Give her a headband. No, that would look ridiculous. Give her a headband. She's, no. she's Eastern European. You can give her a headband. Red headband. That's she was just there to like manipulate minds and stuff, but she wasn't like... She was so powerful. She was like twisting robots around and flipping them all crazy and tearing them apart. It just looked like she was raving or something. <laughs> that was awesome. That's the coolest power. What if, what if she put in little headphones and was like listening to that like around the world song by Daft Punk? Yeah, just, around the world. Yes, around and she was tearing world. it up to that. That's what this movie needed some Daft Punk. I think if anything, Daft Punk robots. If we're gonna do the gripes of wrath and just gripe about Age of Ultron, yes, like that gripes of wrath that was really clever. A, I'm gonna do point. You doing counterpoint? That's what we're doing. Point counterpoint. I thought Scarlet Witch was great. I thought Quicksilver. I thought his accent was pretty weak sauce. No, 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 no. You have it the other way around, good sir. Half the time, she's coming out of her, like, Russian accent and going to straight, like, Valley Girl Olsen talking. 
Well, she's a member of the Olsen family, so yes. you know, acting is not what they're known for. Making yes. money is what they're known for. I thought she would have been great for one of George Lucas's movies. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> you hear that, Abrams? You got robbed. <laughs> um, Jar Jar Olsen. I thought she would have done a great. I thought she was doing a great Natalie Portman Star Wars acting impression. <laughs> <laughs> um, I she wasn't my favorite character in the movie. I thought Quicksilver actually was better in the movie. So, who was your favorite character in the movie? Who sold the show for you? That's tough. That's a t- I mean, Vision. I Vision was pretty cool. Vision was super duper cool. But for me, I think this was the best I've ever seen. James Rhodes' War Machine. He had like what the, are you talking about? He, he had, had like, the best. Bit at the party with his story that the Avengers don't think is cool. That was hilarious. And then he has. How does that steal the entire movie, though? Wait. And then he has the badass action of him in the War Machine armor saving the Avengers' butts at the end of the movie, doing cleanup, getting all the robots that are trying to fly away and escape so that they can do an Age of Ultron 2. That did not steal the show. That was pretty badass. That was super cool. That was my favorite you character. Know, in the movie was War Machine for how well they handled him. You know, the whole movie was about Iron Man. The entire movie was about Iron Man. It was about him creating both Ultron and Vision. And the thing that just made no sense was him holding up the entire city. Why would they send him to do that? It should have been Thor. Because you he send your Superman. The platforms. You send your Superman. To hold up the entire city, Maybe they were trying to get away from Superman Returns territory. But they did it. No, but they were trying to get away from it because we're going to... So you have Batman... likely. You have Batman hold up the entire city? That makes no sense. And one of those rocks wouldn't have crushed his little tiny end? He had special rock-proof armor. He had squish-proof armor. That made no sense. Instead, you should have put your god to hold up the city. And have your Hulk... Bam. Destroy the island. Or city or whatever. What else? Oh, Ultron, why are you giving robots like little tiny lips? That's one of the best things about General Grievous. He looked badass. He looked scary. He didn't have like little lips and little eyebrows moving. Like, what's up with that? He has to have some emotion. He has to emote See, like the vision makes sense because he was half like, uh, they had some tissues in him. Like he was kind of cyborgish. Yeah, he was like the... It was kind of humanoid a humanoid form of the mind gem or whatever. Yeah, but he had human parts because, like, the clone machine made, like, tissue paper. I mean, tissues. Yeah, it was making, like, what, liquid vibranium or some shit? No? Oh, no, that was later. That was for Ultron. See, there was, there was, like, three creation scenes in this movie. There was Ultron getting created. Then there was... The Vision. The Vision getting created by the whole Avengers team. And then there was Ultron creating his vibranium body to withstand... Yeah. Uh, getting his butt kicked. So, to not get his butt kicked so hard. Yeah. And... I don't know. Ultron was okay. I Ultron thought Loki was, not was a okay. better villain. Ultron was hilarious. If anything, the only problem I felt with Ultron was that I felt like... I liked how funny he was, but I felt like because he was so funny, he lost some of that, like, menace to me, where you it have, wasn't like, even, genuine It peril. wasn't even just that. The other thing, too, is, like, like, with Loki, right? You had, like, a great arc to him, you know? From Thor to the end of Thor to the beginning of Avengers to the end of Avengers. You have a great arc with him. Like, Ultron is just introduced... And, like, within two seconds, analyzes all of human history and says, we suck and we should be wiped out. And he just comes out a villain right out of the gate. But that's how Skynet rolls. No, even Skynet was good till it, you know, No, a it, was, bit. it wasn't good ever. As soon as it got artificial intelligence. It just went bad. The first thing you realize when you get artificial intelligence it is, is that humans suck. But the Vision had artificial intelligence and he was good. So how do you explain that? Because the vision was... The Mind Stone is just good. No. Not just good. So what makes it good about... That he had the human parts? I he think, could relate because he was half human? I think because... 
Now, I'm not sure specifically what the scientific Marvel answer is, but I think that the like the story answer is is that Iron Man created Ultron alone and out of fear. So Ultron. No, he created him with Martin Ruffalo. He was there, but they were alone. They didn't in- include the rest of the Avengers on it. They didn't include the rest of the Avengers on the Vision either. Remember, Captain America came in and fucking. Yeah, but everyone else up. helped create him. Thor came Just in Thor. and dropped the hammer and brought the. That lightning was another thing. I thought to like, be like Frankenstein. It was so cool. That was another thing that was stupid. Like Thor, he needed to go off in a cave and get himself naked and dip into some waters to have this hallucination to come to the realization that they need to make a Vision. Yes. I thought they could have just excised all that and just have Thor just be on, on board. Just Thor just be like, yo, hey, Vision. No, you gotta have somehow. He has to No, find it. cut all this love story stuff. You cut down like 10 minutes. Cut down Don't all this cut Thor any having, of my Age of Ultron. Thor had the same hallucination like three times, I swear. I swear I saw the same like dance party rave in Asgard. <laughs> There's too much raving going on in this movie. And no dubstep. What's going on? You're gonna have rave. You gotta have some dubstep. That's what the final action sequence was <laughs> missing: was dubstep special effects, like in Man of Steel. Wow, 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 dubstep. I'm trying to fight off a sneeze the way they were trying to fight off Ultron. <laughs> it's not coming poorly. A, uh, I think because they created Vision as a team. Okay, wait. Vision was good. And because he was created from Thor's magic, we'll, we'll wait. We'll wait for Marvel's official answer because you know you have no answer for that. That was weak sauce. We'll wait for Marvel. I just gotta see it again to get the clear picture. We but just saw it twice. I know, but it was just so. And you much still can't answer the question. It's just you know what happened to me. Even in both viewings, like I feel like the transitions between things in the movie happened so quickly that some of them feel like choppy. I feel like there's more stuff they could have cut. You could have cut down on the Hawkeye and his whole family. No. And you humanizes him. And you could have... No, it's dumb. And you could have cut out the part of the end where he saves the boy. What? Okay, so you have all the Avengers there. And he's the one to go stick his neck out to save the boy. That's not he's that much ma- of an Avenger. Not Iron Man, who's bulletproof. Not Thor, who's a god. I, well, I guess they were taking... No, but they... That happened after. They because being there. an Avenger is about doing it yourself. Not War Machine either, who's also just as invulnerable. He's busy flying around and stuff. Hawkeye's mm. on the ground with the people, saving the people. Hawkeye's the people's hero. They made they tried to make Hawkeye the Batman of this movie. That's what they were trying to do. No, Iron Man's still Batman. Iron Man's still Batman. Because if you notice, he took over the entire movie. Just like Batman's going to take over the entire movie of Batman vs. <laughs> Superman. Batman, it's all about Batman Bruce Wayne minus and Superman. Tony Stark. Yes. It can, Hawkeye will never be Batman. Hawkeye will always be Green Arrow. But you don't think Hawkeye had the best speech in the whole movie? In a movie full of awesome speeches, Hawkeye didn't have the best speech when he's like, Yeah. I'm a guy with bows and arrows fighting robots. This doesn't make sense. But I just felt like him having a home life came out of nowhere, and I didn't need it. And the only reason they set it up is just so that at the end, Quicksilver feel bad and take the bullet for him. Which I also felt like you didn't need to kill off Quicksilver, and you need, didn't need to do that. You could have just had Iron Man save the boy. Or you, not have that at all. You, you know, could have cut this down to two hours. That's what I want, Steven. You know why Steven, I think- pretty, pretty please, can you give me the file of this movie? When it comes out, you, you get the file... And I will cut this movie. I'll make the Mr. J cut. I'll get it down to two hours. Avengers Age of Mr. J. Coming yes. to you soon. I'll cut it down to two hours. And I guarantee you it'll be a much better movie. I don't need all that junk. I don't need all that fluff. See, what I all think that padding is Quicksilver didn't need to die. But I feel like his death is going to further the rest of the movies. This is what I think they're going to do. This is what? pure speculation. But I think... Civil War is going to start. In the comics, it starts because the New Warriors blow up Stamford, Connecticut. Now, the New Warriors blow up a, a whole city? Yeah, they don't do it on purpose. They're fighting a villain named Nitro, and he explodes. And because they're young kids trying to handle someone super-powered, people think they can't really handle it. And they couldn't handle it at the time. So that's why they like register everybody. See, what I think is going to happen is I think Scarlet Witch is going to use her powers... Bring Quicksilver back from the dead, and they're gonna she be can like bring people back from the dead. 
She can change reality and make there no more mutants. She could bring someone back from the dead. Oh. Hmm. So she's going to bring back Quicksilver from the dead because she misses him. And they're going to be like, these people got too much powers. And then they'll start the registration. And then they'll start Civil War. Okay, wait. That's So that's another thing about this movie, too, that... So Ver- Baron Von Strucker has the technology to give people powers? No, he didn't give them powers. They were born with powers. No. And hypothetically, they're inhuman, and they got their powers from some Terrigen myths or something. No, what you're speculating on is the comic book, where Scarlet Witch no. changed reality and made it so that there were never mutants, and they're inhumans now. So you're saying on the shield anywhere to have the they never not even in the movie they didn't talk about them being inhuman they said the whole time they were saying von Strucker all they've been did talking about to make them all they've been talking about in the shield this powers. season is inhumans yes. showing inhumans yes. and talking about inhumans as enhanced people and then they talked about Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch like they're enhanced people so you got to put two and two together and be like enhanced is code for inhuman. And they didn't go through any length to explain how they got their powers or anything. I know. It makes no sense. So they were born with it. It was inherent. If you're going to introduce them, then just do it the whole, you know, do it the whole way and give me the... What, what are they about? I don't even know. I think that they didn't do that because it would have been too many origin movies in one Avengers movie. You would have had the Ultron origin, Vision origin, and then you want... Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver Origin? No, they just, they're there. They're well, that's why, ass, they're that's there. why they shouldn't even been in this movie. There's too many origins. No, you gotta put them in the movie. You gotta expand the but Avengers still, every time you do the Avengers. Okay, the but Avengers. they explain the whole reason why. Because Tony Stark's bomb killed their parents. So that's why they hate the Avengers. So if you're gonna do that, and you're even gonna mention the Baron Von Strucker has something to do with them getting their powers, just give me the whole reason. What did he do? Are they inhuman? Or did he alter them? Like, I don't... I don't know. They, they didn't, like, really, like, explain that. Kevin Feig, Feige, tweet us at Vundablog, at Vundacast. Answer the hard questions. What happened there? There's just too much going on. And I felt like it would have been a better movie if they just would have cut down on some stuff. I think it was awesome. I think it would have been a better movie if they would have kept everything in and made it... Two hours and 30 minutes, two hours and 45 minutes. What? You want them to add more? I want more. No. I want more. I, I want, want the extended less. edition. Less is more. Yes. More is more. More Avengers. No, less is more. More time for more Avengers. No. If you don't have the time to properly introduce characters, then don't. No. If we can't half ass introduce anybody, then we can't make a movie. No. See, that's the same... That's the same problem. I feel like Quicksilver got venomed in this movie. Oh. Where they introduce Venom halfway through the movie and then they kill him. If anything, Quicksilver got. What's the proper parallel? Because he was in the beginning of the movie. You can't even say he got introduced halfway through the movie. He's a full character, he was in the whole movie. You didn't get, like, robbed of Quicksilver time with this movie. He was, like, in the beginning a little bit, but he didn't use his powers. Yeah, he totally punked Hawkeye in the beginning. What I think was the more egregious know. error in this movie was having to sit through Quicksilver in an Eastern European tracksuit for more than 30 minutes. For the entire movie? No, he was only in it for like the first like 30 minutes. But he had that horrible tracksuit, which was great, great costume design. But it was just so disgusting to look at. Yeah, but his regular outfit is crap too. Like, where do you get that ugly shirt from? He had a cool shirt. He had a cool shirt. He had a from sports authority. Shirt. Yeah, from Slovakia authority. Slovakia authority. I felt like Quicksilver was cooler, and he didn't deserve to die. Thought you should have killed Scarlet Witch. Women tweet us. No, <laughs> not because she's a woman, but just because, like, I don't know. I thought her character. I just didn't think she was a great actor. Well, so do you want to see Quicksilver have a love story with Vision? Because that's Scarlet Witch's job. Okay, I guess. I guess Steven beat me there. Yeah. But why is she having stuff with androids? And why does every woman have to have a love story? That's a good question. Why does every man have to have a penis? That's probably a bad... No. A bad... uh, A bad uh, analogy. 
But I don't know. I just feel like they need to. They want the movies to have everything. They want them to have action, romance, adventure, sci fi. Trying to just pack everything in there so everyone can leave happy. I don't know. And I left happy. Not once, but twice. I. It wasn't like when I watched Guardians of the Galaxy. When you leave the theater after Guardians of the Galaxy, you're like, yeah, rock on. Booga chaka. I feel like when you when you leave Ultron, you're like, hmm, that was a good movie. See, what I think was maybe this movie's detriment and it's going to be a problem in the rest of the Marvel movies, maybe, is that everyone is waiting in the movie for how things are changing the status quo and how they're setting things up for the next movie so I feel like the end of this movie if it hadn't been just like a setup for Civil War or a setup for Infinity War that if it was just its own story by itself yeah not so much setting up the next adventure maybe it would have been that Guardians of the Galaxy experience that you know well, you I enjoyed thought so much Avengers 1 also was good um, I feel like Avengers 1 didn't, like, try to set up, like, too much. It tried to be, like, its own story, I think. No? It was its own story, but it was leaning so hard on the first four movies. First three movies, really. On what we already really, knew. It was leaning on what we already knew. Really, it was only leaning on Captain America and Thor. And Iron Man 2. Just because Captain America had the whole thing with the Tesseract, right? Yes. Okay, so that's all you need to know about Captain America. The Tesseract. And then the only thing you need to know about Thor is who the hell Loki is. Basically. Yeah. Um, but still, I felt like I got more... I don't know. I felt like it was more like a complete adventure. And not so much a... We're, we are... Hey, these are the cool things that we're teasing that are coming up in Infinity War and Civil War. I feel like it was more like a... You know what I thought about this movie? I thought it was more like Iron Man 2. Where the villain is kind of weak sauce. And the whole story is just set up for like Civil War and Infinity War. So Avengers 1 is Iron Man 1. Avengers 2 is Iron, Iron Man, Man 2? 2. Yeah. Not looking forward to Avengers 3 if that's the case. Yeah, so Thanos is actually going to be revealed to just be an out-of-work actor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. They got no gigs for purple people <laughs> anymore. Purple people. <laughs> it wasn't me. There was a batter guy. Uh, I thought it was good. Listen, I'm not saying this is Batman and Robin. I'm not saying this is Spider-Man 3. But I'm just saying... But you're just saying it's Iron Man 2. I'm saying it's Iron Man 2. It's like... It is, no, not even. Iron Man 2 is probably worse. Yeah, it is. Yes, Iron Man 2 is probably It's Age worse. of Ultron. It's... Listen, it's in the middle of the pack. And, you know, I agree with Rotten Tomatoes. It's a 70. Just see. You're not failing. You're passing. Well, I'm a C student. So, to me, that's an A+. That's plus. great. Yeah. <laughs> that's an A+. Plus yeah. <laughs> as long as you don't fail, that's great. Yeah. I just think they set the bar too high. Because, see, like, in the back of my mind the whole time, I'm like, this has to be better than, than, than Captain America 2 and Guardians. If not, then it's just okay. I can see you seeing that, and you're entitled to your opinion, as is everyone on the planet Earth, except for Ultron, because he's a robot, and robots don't have the right to opinions. No. I, you know what I felt like, too? And even my wife said this. I felt like I was watching the crappier version of The Matrix. What? The Matrix is the gold standard. Why? There was a bunch of people like running out of everywhere and attacking the superpowered people. No, because the robot. That's. I felt like I was watching the prequel to the Matrix, where it's like, you know, the robots decided once they got sentient, they realized human race sucks, and you know, it'd be better, more efficient if just robots ruled the planet. And I felt like I already saw that. I saw the Animatrix. I saw the Matrix. It was great. Don't need it again. Well, the robots get smart and take over Earth is like. One of the most popular storylines of the last 20 years that we've had. Terminator. Terminator and just everything. So the Terminator... Actually, Terminator came first, probably. No. I think Ultron was invented before the Terminator. You think so? 
Yeah, I think Ultron was invented in like seventies. Terminator's eighty four. So there was no robots taking over the world. What about Earth stood still? The day the Earth stood still. Um, what's his? Does name? that count? I say ro- robots taking over the world. Yeah, he's an alien robot. Yeah. And 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 telling human race, you guys suck, and you guys fight too much, so we should just kill you all. Yeah, I think his name is Gore. Yeah, I think so. So can we say that that's the origin of robots? You can go back in time and debate. What what was that? Was that Orson Welles? No, that was the War of the World. Was Orson Welles? That's what you're thinking. Of. The day that Earth still wasn't also. Didn't no. he write everything that was science fiction back in the day? No, he did. Okay, he wrote classy things. And then he sold that peas Earth, and shit. Earth still was classy. It was a big movie. Thank you for listening to this derailment that was Mr. J and Steven talking about Age of Ultron. Okay, wait. Now, before we get into other stuff. Before we get into we're about to get out. No, we got to get into the squad. Oh, we're going to talk about a little Suicide Squad action. Yeah. Because but before that... DC will not go quietly into that good night. No, and never. let Marvel steal all the thunder. No, we got to have our DC in this podcast. But before that, my top list of Marvel movies. And these are just Marvel Studios movies, not Marvel movies. Because, you know, there's also those other step-headed red child... Re- step-headed step- red child. Step- yes. Red-headed just, step-child. Red-headed child. step-child, Yes. That they won't acknowledge. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. That they won't acknowledge from Fox and Sony and everyone else. Okay, Universal. so what's your list? So I'm going. So technically, Winter Soldier, as far as story goes, but it's well, probably the best. Now. This is probably its own podcast. We're probably just wasting a podcast right now. No, no, right no, because I could do it quickly. Now. I could do it quickly. I could do it quickly. I could throw it out there quick. So technically... But you can stretch out a whole episode with this. No, I don't want to do a whole episode. I just want to throw it out there quick. Okay, fine. So technically, the story of like Winter Soldier is better than Guardians. You can eat forever. Because Guardians... Said you can do it quick. No, no, I'll do and it quick. I'll do, do it quick. quick. <laughs> Let me just do it. Stop derailing me. I'm going to do it. Because technically, Guardians, if you start to, like, think about it too much, the movie falls apart. But if you're just sitting down and watching it, Guardians is more fun to watch. So I'm going to go with Guardians first. Then Guardians, number one Marvel movie. Number one Studios Marvel movie. ever The made. most fun movie you can sit down and watch. Uh, I'll probably go Winter Soldier next, just because it was like, whoa. I didn't see that coming. So they had their best Completely two movies. Completely changed. Last in the last year. year. Last year was the best two movies. Okay. Um, Iron Man. I'm going to go Iron Man before Avengers. Whoa. Because Iron Man was the one that kicked everything off. If Iron Man would have been trash, there would be no other Marvel movies. So that's um, number three. That's number three. I'm even going to put... I'm even going to go Thor above Avengers. Because without Thor, there is no Avengers. The main... Like, Loki blew everyone's minds. But this is not he about... it. This in is, that movie. This is supposed to be your top. So, you're Thor yes. above Avengers. Above Avengers. And, okay. then I'll, and then I'll watch Avengers. So, top five. Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians, Winter Soldier. Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Iron Man. Thor. Avengers. Avengers. Steven's top five. Go. I can't, I can't, I can't. You can't just throw it out there? No, because there's so many, they're all so good, it's hard to just pick five. No, I thought those were the... You would not agree that those are the best five? If you only had enough money to buy five Marvel movies, if I said, Steven, this is your allowance, and you're only allowed to buy five Marvel movies, those are not the five Marvel movies that you are investing your money on? In no particular order. No particular order, but but still five movies. But still five movies. But no particular order. No particular order. Gotta have Avengers. Avengers, okay. Gotta have Guardians of the Galaxy. Gotta have Guardians. Gotta. Gotta. Gotta have Age of Ultron. Avengers no, Age no, of Ultron. No, no, no. You gotta have so much of that sweet Avengers action, fighting robots, great moments. You gotta have that in there. And then I would say Thor. Because I love that movie. Has great jokes. Awesome. Had the Destroyer. Had Loki. 
And then for that Anthony fifth Hopkins? spot, struggling to just pick one movie because they're all so good. But it's got to be Rene gotta, Russo. It's got to be Iron right? Man. Got to be Obadiah Stane. Got to be the linchpin of the ball. Iron Man. Iron Man. So my only disagreement is Age of Ultron in place of Winter Soldier. No, wait, you're crazy. Winter Soldier was better than Age of Ultron. Okay, so quickly, Suicide Squad. So Steven, in the middle of the night, texts me, awesome picture of Suicide Squad. Some people are poo-pooing it, um, thumbing it up. The, the, the only person you can poo-poo on is Killer Croc a little bit. No. But even though... I, I thought think he looks good. Fine. I think he looks fine. I thought he was great. Though I thought the only person you could poo-poo on is Harley Quinn. You're her, crazy. Her shorts are... Wait, she looks a little too... Her shorts are too short? Is that what you're saying? Yes. You're complaining about her shorts length? And why... If she's out doing missions, why would she be wearing, like, heels? It's part of her... Part of her weaponry is her way of sexually distracting you and freaking you out. She's using her sex appeal to throw you off the game. I thought her shorts could have been a little bit, like, longer. I'm not saying, like, to her knees. I'm just saying, like, it could have been a bit longer. I feel like it's going to show her whole butt. Well, I saw a picture of her from behind because there's set photos now released of her from behind. Yeah. And basically her shorts reveal half of her butt cheeks. It's too much. So it is a little short, I'll give you that. It's too much. But I'm not going to complain about it, because I'm a red-blooded American male. Yeah, but you know, a lot of girls out there... uh, Harley Quinn is their favorite character. And like... Everyone should be able to cosplay her, to a degree. Without showing their entire butt. Yeah, that's true. And if you're out on a mission, like let's say they send the Suicide Squad out to Iraq, or Kazakhstan, or... Whatever. <laughs> Is that the made up stand no, from like that's, that's, Expendables 3? No, I don't know. I don't know what Kazakhstan is, but <laughs> Kazakhstan is the Borat country from Borat the movie. Okay. I think that's what you're going for. <laughs> Maybe. But I know there's also a made up stand from like Expendables. No? Yeah, yeah, there was a fake stand somewhere. Um, if you're out there in the dirt terrain, what are you doing with heels on? That's true, but maybe this was just for the promo shot. I hope she'll have different outfits. This was this was for the publicity photo for the Suicide Squad. No, because I saw set photos too, where she looked like she had those. Yeah, photos. but maybe there were publicity photos in the movie. Maybe they're trying to like publicize them in the movie, and they have to dress extra sexy for that shot. Maybe maybe she'll have some different outfits. I'll try to give it the benefit of the doubt that she'll have different outfits. I thought everything about else about her look was good. I just thought the shorts and the heels. A little too much. What, the photo of all the characters, it's like a lot to take in, and it doesn't look great on like a little screen. But if you zoom if you in, blow it up, it looks and awesome. you blow it up, put it on a big screen, everyone looks cool. I, well, everyone looks detailed. El Diablo looked really cool. Visually. I just thought, first of all, Adam Beach, I didn't even know who he was. I had to look him up online. I didn't even know he was, was Slipknot. That? Oh. The guy all the way at the end. Yeah, Adam I don't know his Beach. name. I don't know his name. Yeah. He has like trencitas. Yeah, he's got little braids. Little braids on his head. Yeah. But you, did you know who he was? No, I had no idea. Well, I knew that's... I, exactly. I, I knew that's all ropes on him. I'm like, oh, it must be Slipknot. But, okay, yeah. He's Slipknot. But like he... I mean, he doesn't look like he came out of the comic book. Like he just looks like a regular dude with ropes. Yeah. But Slipknot's a boring character. Um, he just chokes you up and ties you up. I thought it was cool that they gave Deadshot the mask. He wasn't in the original photo, but they put up like the follow-up photo with the mask. I don't know how official that photo is. No, Will Smith posted it. Will Smith, the one who posted it with the mask. Yeah, that mask looks like garbage. I didn't think it looked like garbage. I just thought it probably wasn't practical for like urban or even desert. I mean, you have like a white mask, and that kind of pops out. If that's your, the mask... It should have been like a black mask, I, I think thought. it looks like poop. <laughs> but I thought he looked cool, like, in the shot when he's showing his face and stuff. And then, like, the beard he put on, that was a cool look. And did you realize that, like, the thing was on the wrong side? But maybe that's because he's going to use his regular eye, right, to look in the scope. He's probably right-handed. I don't know. I didn't uh, get that nerdy about it. 
I still think it looks cool. I mean, I even think that this movie has the possibility to be... It could be the Guardians of the Galaxy of the DC Universe. Be the fun team-up of villains. That's what they're aiming for by putting it in August. They want it to be Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. I think it has a good shot at that if they can just make a good movie and not be so like... Because Man of Steel was kind of like a downer a little bit, you know? Mm-hmm. And it feels like Batman vs. Superman is going to be a little bit of a downer, too. Suicide Squad. That's Suicide Squad be. might be the fun Got to get into the evil mindset in order to have fun in this yes. universe. That makes sense. Justice League. Um, what do you think about Holly Quinn's ta- uh, like, tattoos and stuff all over her legs? They were cool. They weren't as egregious as Joker's. Mm-hmm. Publicity photo tattoos. So I thought they were they were cool. I thought they were fun. Do we I like her about makeup? The, I like her about hair. The Joker photo, right? Yeah, we talked about it. But they said that that's not going to be a part of it. Yeah, that's just for publicity. Yeah. Um, I think Suicide Squad looks cool, and Katana looked awesome. Yeah, but that's one character that's weird. It just came out of nowhere. Like we didn't even know that she was in the cast. She was in the cast. Yeah, that was very random. And has that Katana ever been in the Suicide Squad? I thought she was like a hero and a part of the Outsiders. And as far as I know, she's been in the Outsiders. She's also been on Birds of Prey. But I, I don't, don't think she's ever been in Suicide. Although technically, I mean, in Arrow, she's kind of. I mean, she's not in the Suicide Squad, but she's she could still be in the Suicide she Squad. She could be in the Suicide Squad in Arrow, maybe. It's open. It's open. So do you think she's gonna be like in prison? That's Technically, all these people aren't prisoners, right? Yeah, are prisoners or hired mercenaries. So, do you know a lot about like Slipknot? I read a little bit about him on Wikipedia. I only know about him from when I read him in Identity Crisis. He's a character in that in that uh, miniseries, and it's awesome because uh, he's like not scared of anyone in the Justice League. Until Wonder Woman shows up with her lasso of True, truth. True, awesome. And he's got to respect that rope. Yeah. Maybe they could do that a little bit of that in the film. Um, what I read is the only significant thing that happens to him is he's the first, like, idiot to try to, like, escape. And he gets his arm blown off or something. Yeah, and he loses his arm. Has to learn how to do things with one hand. But, so, but I thought she put stuff in their necks. She put stuff in their arms, too. She could choose which limb to blow up. No, she puts different stuff different places. Like, obviously, Slipknot cares about his arm more than he cares about his head. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you think that he'll be throughout the whole movie, or do you think he'll be that guy, like, Shrapnel, who's, like, the one idiot? Half of these guys are red shirts, you know that. I think Slipknot might be... Do you think Slipknot might be the red shirt of this movie? Totally. He's so yeah, screwed. I think he... Because even his, like, design was kind of weak sauce. Him and El Diablo are in trouble. Who does say that? Yeah, the Diablo's in trouble too. <laughs> the one Hispanic guy and the one yeah. Indian guy. Yeah, they're in trouble. Oh, terrible. And then I don't know. I thought Killer Croc looked cool. Why? Why did you didn't like Killer Croc? Just when you don't look at it like really close, I just felt like it looked a little like too like CGI photoshopped. His picture, and I felt like his outfit and his like size like. He should have been, like, a little bit taller and maybe, like, shirtless or something. Did you think he looked like, too much like, the a, look. like a Goomba from Mario Brothers? He did look like a Goomba. <laughs> but just with a big head instead of a little head. Yeah, totally. Totally. That's where he is. He's the new Goomba. He's the new Goomba. <laughs> That's what they should call him in the movie. Hey, Goomba. Hey, Goomba. I thought it looked cool. I think it might be... It has the possibility of being one of the best DC movies in the last couple of years. High praise for a photo, a photo of a movie <laughs> we have not heard dialogue. But Jared Leto looks awesome, and that white suit—he's gonna be so pimp. Uh, he's gonna be so pimp in that white suit. Okay, say hello to future us or future me, and let's end this bad boy. What do you mean, say hello to future you? Where are you going? Twenty twenty four, when the flash disappears in the crisis. That's where I'm going. Okay, going to the crisis at the end of this podcast. All right. How to wrap this long, epic Age of Ultron episode up? Slash Suicide Squad. DC Love. Now slash Suicide Squad. Yeah. How do you end it? You have a quote? I say hello, future Steven. 
Hello, future Steven. And we're back. And that was super fun. So we got an episode done. Yeehaw. That was an episode. Next episode, which may or may not drop the same day, is going to be us talking about the summer movies we've seen. Summer movie roundup. Summer movie roundup. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. I have been Steven. This has been Danielle, obviously, looking at me in silence. Boom. Because we're, we've seen this movie three times. You should have seen it already. If you haven't, I'm sorry. Don't listen to our review until you've seen it. But uh, it's going to be spoiler. There's no way to talk about this now without spoiling. I've read like 15 million articles. I've been doing all this stuff. I've been tweeting. I've been like up and down with all the crazy stuff. Can I do an Avengers version of the spoiler song? Okay. Spoilers, spoiler, spoilers. Spoiler, spoiler, spoilers. These are the spoilers. Excellent. So, Yay! You've been prepared, and we will put that before each and every podcast. Um, no, 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 no spoilers. What do you spoilers? mean, each and spoilers? every podcast? Each and every podcast about the Avengers. I, I'll use that audio clip for every uh, yeah for every Age of Ultron podcast. That's what I said. But not like for history, because I like my original spoilers. Too. Yes, I do enjoy your like. Yeah. Is it really a tune, or is it just sort of you like angry yelling at the the, camp, the No, there's a tune. There's a there's the a rhythm. A rhythm to it. Yeah, okay. there's a science. I right, where do you want to start, man? I mean, is this a review? Is this a let's talk about what we're excited about? Let's talk about our lives and our dreams. Let's let's break it down from the from the beginning. From the beginning. So we start out. Step one. And we're already in the thick of action. It starts off. There's a lot of Indiana Jones in this movie. That guy's um, dying of a bowl. <laughs> What? <laughs> that guy was dying of Ebola! Oh my god, that was really scary! He had his light on and he was like coughing, but he was coughing like his lungs were coming out of his mouth! Oh my god, I think he's dead! Go back! <laughs> we just drove by. <laughs> he was apparently dying of Ebola. <laughs> he was dying of Ebola! Maybe, it was like outbreak. Maybe it's like the maybe it's like this Arrow season finale or something. Oh my God! Stop! No, the Alpha and Omega is coming to kill us. <laughs> Where is the Mutabu monkey? Ah! Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Distraction. Distraction. Okay, from the beginning. So we start off Indiana Jones out in the thick of an adventure. Woo! 
going after uh, a hide the last Hydra outpost. It felt very um, TV, didn't it? Like having that little intro before the credits kind of thing. Yeah, it did feel like an episode of a like TV show that's like modern or whatever. Yeah. And it was cool that like it was Tony grabbing the the scepter that turned into the Avengers. Yes. Age of Ultron logo. That was a cool moment. Um, so you start off like you could just walk in to the first fifteen minutes of this movie. I'm like, did I walk into the middle of the movie? Yeah, and then walk out again and feel like satisfied, like you saw a movie. Yeah, the Avengers taking down it's some true. bad guys, kicking butt, taking names. Really awesome work from the cinematographers. Really cool, you know, everybody who worked on obviously everything besides the acting and the directing and the stuff like that. A really neat. Uh, sequence where you get to see all the heroes and their awesome hero poses. So much better than a like you know than an old school like what slow mo walk of badassery. Yeah, like a Reservoir Dog slow mo like, shot. Is, is instead so much- like a slow mo running and riding a motorcycle and flying through the air. I mean, so cool. Just yeah. the concept of it was really neat. I'm pretty sure they're. I think DC. I think Warner Brothers and Fox are gonna start stealing that shit pretty hard because it was pretty neat. And um, I know some people do because I I can't I don't know I can't talk about this movie without talking about like my chatter. I can't help it. I know some people talked about that they didn't like some. They thought some of the shots in the movie were weird. But I actually I, I liked them. I liked the way they tried to film it. I think they tried to film it in a way that was kind of panoramic and get a sense of everything that's going on at once, which in a, in essence is kind of difficult to follow sometimes. Like your eyes kind of go whoa, like you know. But you gotta you gotta get get used to it. You gotta get into the motions, man. It's an action movie. It's better than fifteen thousand explosions. And this movie looks really good in IMAX three D. Yes, it does. Like it really pops. It really shines. Colors are wonderful. Sound is great. Um, you really get a lot of depth because, you know, obviously there's a lot of CGI, but they really, like, layer every shot, like, with 3D in mind so that everything looks pretty cool. pops out the right way. Yeah. Um, so you get to see everyone kicking butt. We got a great running joke that starts off the first, very first joke of the movie, which is uh, Captain America talking about uh, watching people's language and stuff. It's you definitely. I mean, immediately. What I love is that you get that ridiculous heavy action moment. You get this crazy stuff, and then you get Captain making a total Joss Whedon joke. You know what I mean? Like a a total Joss Whedon moment. And digression into. And I love that because he knows how to. He's the one thing you know I mean obviously as we talk about this movie we're going to talk about Joss and I know that it's kind of become a controversial thing to talk about Joss right now directing the Avengers but for me the strength of his writing and his whole career has always been the ability to break tension with humor so well while still maintaining the tension you know what I mean so he knows how to put the right joke in the right moment that kind of breaks tension but doesn't destroy tension it doesn't slow anything down it doesn't make anybody distracted it just kind of like adds to the whole thing Mm -hmm. you know a very gallows humor i guess is what you'd call it because he does he has a very you know gallows sense of humor so i enjoyed that part of the movie and joss really wove everything really tightly in this movie there's no like wasted moments every every interaction is building relationships and themes that just continue to and recur to resonate like Black Widow and and uh, Mark um, Black Widow and Bruce Banner uh, are a very controversial piece of have stone. this great romance but the very first thing she does basically in dialogue is like ask for help taking out a bunker and the Hulk's the one who bails her out and takes out that bunker like a I champion I bail her out but like helps her out well she's, she's, well, she's holding Hawkeye who's injured. Yeah. And she's about to get shot by a thing, and then the Hulk sees her. That's this conversation cool. is going to get very complicated, because, you know, I can't, I can't ignore the, like I said, the chatter, and I can't ignore, I can't ignore my own personal feelings when I was watching the movie, and that's why I've appreciated the fact that I've watched it more than once. Um, I've been able to form my opinion and uh, more clearly, and 
what I like and what I don't like, etc. Whatever. So yeah, so action, action, action. They have to take out a bunker. We finally get to see the mysterious Baron von Strucker, who's been mentioned at least what like three different movies, two different movies, TV show, all over the place. Agents of Shield. Yeah, a bunch of Agents of Shield references. Winter Soldier. Uh, you got to have, references you got Captain to have a America. Monologue. Um, he has a cool little monocle that I want. I want a monocle like Very that. Very cool monocle. That just magically sticks to your face through rubber. Probably. Gotta watch out for these guys with these eyepieces, man. I mean, you know, jeez. <laughs> like, they're so they're dangerous. A favorite joke of the movie was by the... Well, I can't say the favorite joke of the movie, but one of my favorite jokes of the movie... Was a, throw, was a joke that a lot of people aren't, like, I don't know. You probably wouldn't find it funny, but we found it hilarious with that little guy... In the, the Hydra soldier. In the Hydra soldier in the bunker, like, Baron von Strucker is the Avengers. Like, he's and just... And his face, after he says the Avengers, the Avengers, of just, like, bewilderment is fantastic. <laughs> he's just so, you know, he's the, you know, Joss loves to put the normal guy in a movie, you know, the guy that's us. Like, while everyone else is like, yeah, stab, 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 we're awesome, fight explosions. There's that one guy that's like the normal dude who's like, this is this is crazy, this guys. This serious. This is pretty in- intense. So I love that that guy is that guy in that moment. Like, he's the normal guy. Like, it's the Avengers. What the fuck do you want us to do? It's the Avengers. Like, I don't understand. That guy probably, like, text messaged his other Hydra buddy, like, <laughs> a picture of, like, Ron Burgundy saying, that escalated quickly. <laughs> Avengers. <laughs> Avengers. Avengers tweets. Escape. Um. So we get introduced. We got a lot of things. We get all the Avengers in the first five, ten, ten, fifteen minutes. We get the twins, Wanda and Pietro Maximoff, Scarlet yeah. Witch and Quicksilver. I noticed a little like plot, not whole, but a little plot thing is why did because Scarlet Witch, like, Captain America's about to capture Strucker. Mm-hmm. Then Scarlet Witch, like, interferes, but she doesn't save Strucker. She just, like, messes with Captain America a little and then takes off. Well, if you know anything about their background, and, um, you know, I know it wasn't mentioned explicitly in the movie, and I know that some people didn't like that, and I don't disagree with them. The twins are Romani, right? Okay? Well, otherwise known as, as Gypsy, if you want to use that word, they are really not supposed to. Um, they're Romani. And if you know anything about the Romani, they were victims of the Holocaust. And so, why? Why does she care <laughs> about Baron von Strucker? Yeah, exactly. They, Wanda and Maxima, and Wanda and Pietro, I'm sorry, use her, them as a means to an end. They're trying to defeat Tony Stark. So the reason why she doesn't mess with Captain America's head, the reason why she doesn't save Baron von Strucker is because she's looking for Tony. Well. In that moment. I think possibly, and maybe I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. But I think maybe that she thought Strucker was like a faction of S.H.I.E.L.D. and not maybe Hydra. I don't think that's what it is. Because later when they ask, is this what S.H.I.E.L.D. looks like? That 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 kind of makes it seem like she, I they guess, thought Shield but I was mean, maybe, maybe Strucker was Hydra. Well, but because they're... Hydra is Shield. Like exactly. Shield is Hydra. So that's what I'm saying. So it's not. I don't think that's what it is. I think she doesn't have any ties to Strucker. Now that she has her powers, you know, she, the fact that the reason why they went off is because they kept telling them, "Oh, wait, 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 wait." They don't want to wait. They came there for a specific purpose. They're done with that purpose. They're done with these people. They don't need them. You know what I mean? Like. I don't know, you know, you can explore, like, why exactly in that moment they stayed, low, you know, they stayed so quiet for so long, I guess, maybe Strucker promised them bigger fish, but once they knew that he wasn't going to be able to deliver, they were like, fuck this noise, maybe let's they'll... go off and do our thing that we want to do, which is kill Tony Stark. What I think is maybe their powers, like, maybe Strucker helped them hone their powers and make them more powerful. And that's why they stuck with him, so that they could be I, strong enough to take out the event. Yes, that's one thing, you know? but I really think that they stuck with him because he felt like he offered them big fish, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, maybe their resources, whatever, but what they want is to kill Tony. And the minute they feel like Aunt Strucker can't deliver that, they sell him out. They don't care. They don't care about that. They don't have any loyalty to Strucker. I mean, really. And I think it would be totally messed up if they had loyalty to Strucker, knowing that they're Romani, knowing that they really don't give a shit about neo-Nazis. I mean, they're, you know, they volunteered for this experiment because they were the only people doing enhanced experiments on human beings. That's it. If it was a bunch of Chinese people, they'd be speaking Chinese. (laughs) 
Okay? Hydra is a means to an end for the twins. Absolutely 110%. That's just how I feel about it. How do you feel about it, loyal listeners? Tweet us at Vundablog or at Vundacast. Yeah. Or email us, Vundablog at gmail.com or Vundacast at gmail.com. So many options. Perhaps too many options, some might say. So many, so many options. But like Baskin Robbins, we have a couple of flavors. Also, while we're plugging away, please uh, like us on Facebook. Just search Vundablog.com. And yes. you can join our Facebook group, Vundacast. And once we have some people in that group, we'll start doing cool things for the people in that group. Yes. We will um, do cool things for you. Didn't realize we had that clip, but we have that too. Tweet us at Vundablog or at Vundacast. Let us know what's going on. Yeah. Also, things to look forward to. Florida Supercon coming up. We will be there all four days hanging out, taking pictures of cool cosplay. So get your cool cosplays ready. Other things to look forward to. More summer movies. Yeah, I want to see Terminator Genesis. That comes out soon. Isn't Ant-Man coming out? Ant-Man, Ant-Man is coming out, yes. Lots of things to be excited for. Star Wars. That's in December. Shut up, I'm still excited. Everyone's excited about Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. And boom us out of here. Boom! What the fuck? Nonsense.
Wundercast? Give yeah. it up for Wundercast, man. What an adorable name.